Porter Airlines is now offering flights to major destinations in Canada and limited cities in the U.S. They are creating competition for Air Canada and WestJet and have become our airline of choice for flying between Vancouver and Toronto. These are some of the pros and cons to flying Porter Airlines and the big reason we keep choosing to fly with them. Today, Chris and I are taking the five-hour flight from Vancouver to Toronto on Porter Airlines. Porter was founded in 2006, but at the time they were really only flying out of Toronto Island Airport, which is a pretty small airport and they weren't an option for us. But a couple of years ago, a friend told us that Porter had expanded and she had heard good things about them. I looked it up and I saw that I could, in fact, fly Porter Airlines between Vancouver and Toronto. I was initially concerned that they weren't a big enough airline for us, and that if our flight were to get cancelled, we wouldn't be able to get on another one until the next day or maybe even the day after that. But when I looked it up, I saw that they did actually have four flights a day from Vancouver to Toronto. So last year, I booked our first flight with them. I also signed us up for a VIP Porter account, or VI Porter I guess it's technically called, so we could collect points for our flights. Whenever Chris and I stay in a new hotel or use a new airline, I always sign up for their points programs. I'm not a really big fan of points programs in general, but for airlines and hotels, I find they work really well for us. And there's been a couple of times that I haven't signed up for them, and then I end up regretting it later. Our first flight on Porter Airlines last year went really well, and since then, Chris and I have been exclusively flying Porter Airlines between Vancouver and Toronto. If you've flown Porter Airlines, please let us know your experience in the comments. It kind of sucks that I'm not collecting Air Canada Aeroplan points on these flights, as I collect points there for a lot of our other international flights, but I seem to be doing okay on the VI Porter program. And the cute little Mr. Porter raccoon mascot is hard to resist. Prices between Air Canada and Porter Airlines are comparable. For example, the one-way flight I looked at from Toronto to Vancouver on Porter Airlines starts at $152. Air Canada's base rate is $169 for a similar time slot. But the base Porter ticket doesn't include a carry-on bag, whereas the Air Canada one does. To bring a carry-on bag, you need to buy the $186 Porter Airlines ticket. Then, of course, there are options to select seats, check bags, buy insurance, etc. You can see that the prices between the two airlines kind of vary a little bit depending on exactly what you're doing, but I find them to be comparable overall. All right, let's get to the airport. In Canada, Air Canada dominates the ticketing area and often has gates that are closer to the security checkpoint. With Porter, you have to walk a bit farther. We keep walking and walking and walking until we get to the far corner of the airport to find our gate. Porter Airlines boards by row number, not zone. We purchased a seat, but because we're sitting near the front of the aircraft, we have to wait to board. I'm one of those people that likes to board early to get space in the overhead bin, so the wait's a little stressful for me. The biggest reason that I'm loving flying Porter right now is the configuration of the aircraft. Porter flies Embraer planes. They are much smaller, so they take less time to board and to deplane. And the seats are two together. We don't have the three seats across like on most Air Canada flights. So when we fly Porter, we don't have to worry about that dreaded middle seat. Porter Airlines flights also include complimentary snacks and drinks. The options were fava beans or cookies, and I chose cookies. The snacks aren't very big, but you can buy meals if you want to. Porter planes don't have that in-seat entertainment console, but they do have an app with a reasonable selection of movies and TV shows. We also get free in-flight Wi-Fi, which is a pretty nice perk. Please return to your seat and fasten your seatbelt securely. Place your tray table. We're about to land in Toronto. Because we're flying Porter, we're landing at Pearson Airport's Terminal 3, not Terminal 1, which is for Air Canada and its Star Alliance members. And that's our flight on Porter Airlines. I find the no middle seat to be the biggest reason to fly Porter, and it just makes the flight seem so much more comfortable. Plus, it's nice to have another choice apart from Air Canada and WestJet and the discount airlines. And that's our video for today. If you want to see more very Canadian ways to travel, check out this video on Via Rail here. We'll see you in the next one.